Welcome back to the show. You are here at the Twisted Tubs podcast. I am Stephen Tuberty, a.k.a. Twisted Tubs. He is Brian Regan, a.k.a. Brian's Action Figure Reviews. And tonight's show, we're going to be talking about the Marvel Universe. Not the MCU, the Fox. 20th Century Fox's 18 movies. Hit, miss, or whatever. We're going to talk about them. So, Brian, yeah, man. The, the Marvel before Marvel, you know, actually got it right. For the most part. So, <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? I cheered the day Marvel Studios got the rights to the X Men and Fantastic Four back. I, I, I think everyone did do. To be fair, because I mean, like looking back, I mean, I look, looking back at the Fox movies, as I said, there's eighteen of them. If I'm wrong, correct me, but yeah, there's eighteen of them there, and more bad than good. Definitely more bad than good. I think you should like set out as you mean to go on. And in the first, in the very first X-Men movie, they showed particular disdain for the original X-Men costumes by making a, even a joke about it in near the end of the first one, I think it was, when Hugh Jackman Jackman turned, Yeah, Hugh Jackman says it to uh, Rogue, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, no. And I, the I, fact I, that Brian Singer has a letter fetish, amongst other things. So like okay, so look, we we go from we go from the first X Men movie, so like because like when the first X Men movie came out, um, I mean even now, I mean, like we've like I'll put it just way, we've seen how the X Men movies started, and we mm. saw how they finished, but they weren't always bad. They weren't always like top notch either, but you know it started off on some okay grounds. Like X Men One, for the most part, it did have the black costumes instead of the, the authentic costumes but it wasn't a terrible film by any means you know mm. um, and then X2 came out and in my opinion it's I think it's one of the better X-Men films yeah. I think there's a lot in there now is it perfect no is there a lot of fucking plot holes there's plot holes in the entire X-Men fucking film franchise they're fucking they're everywhere but yeah I just thought it was a really good movie and then we got Last Stand and Fuck me. But I will say one thing about X-Men and Last Stand, as bad as it is, as bad as it is, I thoroughly enjoyed the ending to the Phoenix saga of that trilogy. To the Dark Phoenix we got not so long ago. The only like when you when you mentioned the last stand there, the first thing that popped into my head was, oh the juggernaut, bitch. Yeah, my God. And and this is my point about it, right? Now, because look, I think it's been well documented, right? I'm not a fanboy of in any way, shape or form. I don't mm. jump from one camp to the other. I love Marvel, but I love DC more. I've always been a bigger DC fan, but I, I, I'm a big <laughs> Marvel just fan. just contradicted yourself. <laughs> no, no, but I'm not. I mean, just, just DC is always what I grew up with. And I, I mm. you know, I venture in, but even growing up, I can honestly admit, it was always X-Men, Spider-Man, is the Hulk until mm-hmm. I got older and appreciated like other characters like Iron Man and, and all them. I started like I read the comics and things, but I never really like I was never a Captain America fan. I always thought he was douchey as fuck. Same with Cyclops, I always hated Cyclops. I thought he was just such a douche man, you know. Well, Cyclops and, is a dick, yeah, yeah, which is <laughs> you know, why they've never gotten him right to do it from stuff in any of the fucking movies, like you know. And um, but I always appreciated the X Men. I thought the X-Men were just... Mm. I mean, we've talked about it recently because it's no secret. Me and Brian are like you know, really fucking good dudes, really close mates. So we talk about stuff and we talked about the X-Men character recently. And I think the whole concept of why we're talking about this tonight is because I'm randomly... <laughs> some night during the week was just sitting at home flicking through the thing and I started watching fucking... You know, was it a, the, the Dark Phoenix? Um, mm. And my eyeballs melted out of my brain. So me and Brian was like, oh, we should talk about this next week. So now here we are. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying, I appreciate both sides, but you know yourself, it's like, you know, I mean, you you like DC and Marvel, but you always yeah. just like Marvel stuff more. That's kind of where I was mm. with DC. I always kind of just I gravitated to that side more. But yeah, so just going fucking off the bat, like I'd really like to hear your thoughts on on like 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 where it all kind of started to fall and come back up and fall again. Like mainly like, on the X-Men movies in general, like like for the X-Men movie, do you know what's actually a good thing? The Resident Evil movies, right, are very similar how they treat the video games to how the X-Men movies treat the comics. Yeah, yeah your favourite characters are there. 
But by fuck, they're nothing like they should be. <laughs> and isn't it fucked up that like those Resident Evil movies, like even though I I know they're all bad, I still watch them. <laughs> like I know me, they're terrible. Like I think if you if you watch the X Men movies, having never read a comic in your life, or never heard of these comic characters ever, they're enjoyable films. Like, that's what they aimed for. They aimed for the casual audience. Popcorn and, movies. Yeah, and they, they succeeded for a while. But, like, it's the same with Transformers as well. All the Bay movies. Fucking shocking if you're, a fan, if you're an actual Transformers fan. But if you're not, they're just rock 'em sock 'em robots and they're great fun. It's, it's, it's like... It's like the, my first point, right? They showed disdain for the comic outfits. And... First, kind of stupid looking costume they tried to do in, the, in uh, the MCU was Captain America, blue, blue, white, and gold, or whatever, spandex, spandex, and they got that right. They weren't, they didn't shy away from that stuff. Yeah. Whereas in the X Men movies, it was like, ew, we're not doing anything like the comics. Why would you do that? Yeah, I mean, and, and and it is. I mean, as much as and I, and I do, I do actually really, really like Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I thought he was like. I mean, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, he's too tall." Or, or yeah, look, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Fucking, you know, they, they're, they're actors playing characters that aren't real to begin with. You know, so might have pissed a lot of people off by saying that, Brian. But it's true, right? And um, but no, but at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? I, I thought he like. I mean, he he was. He was a stellar casting choice. Like when you think about when he first came in, he I don't think he was even really that well known, if if known at all. It was they wanted Russell Crowe, and Russell Crowe was busy, so he recommended his mate. Yeah. So I mean, and look, and he and he got set up as the and and look to his credit, I think he did a fantastic job as Wolverine. Now, has he been in some bad Wolverine movies? Origins, yes, Origins is the movie I'm going with her. Um, when they first when it when when they went. To do like the they were doing, I think that was the plan, wasn't it? After the last end, it was to do origin movies of, of each character. Mm. I think that was their original plan. And there then, was a Magneto one in, in plan as well for a yeah. while, and which, then, which eventually became first class. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, like, it, and, and so something good came out of it. You know what I mean? This is what I mean about the, these X Men movies. Like, first class was good, and mm. I would argue that Days of Future's Past is. Not without its plot holes or its issues, but I think for me personally, it's one of the stronger X Men movies. I really enjoyed the shit out of that, even though some character choices were a bit, you know. But Iffy. for the most part, I enjoyed the ride. I really did. I liked the fact that they had the they had the older actors from the first trilogy and the newer, you know, version, the younger versions, and had them kind of you know switching back and forth. I I really thought it was really good. Like, but then you know you got the follow up to it. Which was kind of really strange to think of. I mean, you have you have first class apocalypse, days of futures past, and then apocalypse. Then you go back to the original trilogy. You've actually one, two, and then the last end. They fucked it up on the third movie for the second time, but then they followed it up. They didn't just let it go. They followed it up with an even worse fucking movie. Like you know, it was wow. Like and they, but at least at least did we we got Logan before Dark Phoenix, right? Yeah. Yeah. So at least we have fucking Logan, you know? Like, the epitome of Fox is this, right? Here's Deadpool. Yeah. The most successful film they've done. Fox basically, like, Ryan Reynolds went away and got a concept trailer done off his own back and leaked it to the internet. Well, somebody leaked it to the internet anyway. But um, that got a bunch of fan push and what have you. And Fox was like, oh, look, here's some money. Go make a movie. You can probably flop. We don't care. So they, he went off with his creative team and made the best movie, Fox-related movie, to date. Yeah. And then for the sequel, Fox was like, hey, you, come over here. We want to have a look at this. And they made Deadpool 2 and it was fucking... It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but you, you no, could it tell... It wasn't as terrible as the other movies. No, right? but, but you could definitely tell there was studio hands involved. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I mean, I know we're having a Marvel talk, but... I mean that's kind of what I what I've I've seen as well with the DC with their movie releases. You know, I mean they have like they release it and then they have an ultimate cut because you know there's there's studio hands in. Now thankfully, this is what I mean about this. The MCU doesn't have that. The MCU has a plan, and they know every single thing. Now has every MCU movie been perfect? No, 
but they have a but solid like, plan and it is a fucking fantastic franchise. The, the, the movies before the MCU were very, very much like DC in a way. Mm, yeah. There was a lot of interference. There was a lot <clears> of like ups and downs, you know what I mean, in this thing. Um, but, I mean, when you think about it outside the box, man, um, like, yeah, not even just the X-Men franchise, right? Because, you know, like for me personally, I think, you know, I think it's a weird one, Logan. I think Logan, I think Logan is one of the best, the best uh, Fox mm. And I wouldn't even say Fox. I think it's one of the best superhero franchise movies made. I I absolutely adored that film. Like, and not just because mm-hmm. not, not as an X Men movie or not as a as an as a Marvel film, just as it for a film for what it was. I I just love it. But then you you look at the entire thing outside the box, the whole of this 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 Fox Marvel, and you have like Fantastic Four one and two, and then you had the reboot of Fantastic Four. You had like Electra. You had Daredevil. Let's go for a dance in the park. <laughs> and I'm going to screw here because I know I'm forgetting something. No, I'm not. And New Mutants. That was the newest one. That was like that, that was the last one to kind of like finish it. But um, mm. yeah, let's quickly talk about the Fantastic Four movies, dude. I like. I enjoyed the first two Fantastic Four movies with Chris Evans and. Um, Jessica Alba and Oyen Grufud, or however you say his name, and Julian McMahon was an okay Doctor Doom. I didn't mind those at all, but they still weren't great. They're more a guilty pleasure than something I'd watch over yeah, and I mean, over. Like, I mean, for me, like how you, what you're saying about you being a guilty pleasure, um, you were still watching Daredevil's that for me. Mm. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say it to anyone, like if you've, if you've only seen the theoretical release of Daredevil, go watch the director's cut. It's a much better film. Like it's no, a much I got a more. One for you. Which? Go watch the go watch the Netflix show instead. <laughs> oh no, look, without a doubt, without a doubt, it's a much better watch. What I'm saying is like for, for a garden. Um I, I I think I think the Ben Affleck Daredevil is it's like it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Go back and watch it again because how long has it been since you saw that movie? Tubbs is a mark for Ben Affleck. Oh no no it's not it's not at all and um, I just like I I remember like it, the soundtrack was was killer on it as well man look it had a good sound but I do understand like Colin Farrell's Michael, bullseye was Michael Clark Duncan is a hmm he was a great kingpin as well yeah see like I mean like I I think when you look at it outside the box Daredevil was that movie that was just it it is basically it's a comic book story. With comic book characters made in a com- like made to look like a comic book. Well, mm-hmm. that's what it is, you know. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not. It's fucking. It's an over up there with the best fucking movies ever made. But if for some reason that movie, when I saw it, I was going, I don't hate this like everyone else seems to hate this movie. Mm-hmm. Like I'm aware it's not like you know like Avengers Endgame good, you know, you know, or it's not even Tour the Dark World good. But it's it's I okay it. for me to watch, <laughs> you know. Did you like what I did there? <laughs> it was. I enjoyed Tour the Dark World. Ex- see, exactly. For a lot of people, including myself, I, I honestly think Tour the Dark World is the weakest of the three Tour movies. But then I've often been told in conversation, Brian, that Ragnarok is the weakest, and I don't think so. But that's to say, this is when it all comes down to, it all comes down to personal preference, really, doesn't it? I will you say know? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about two and three, but the first one is the strongest for me. Oh, the which one? Four. Four. Well, to be fair, I go out and say it in the MCU's first phase, obviously Iron Man, because Iron Man started and that was the first movie we saw, but out of mm-hmm. the rest of them, not including Avengers, but like the solo movies leading to Avengers, Thor was my favourite. You know? So it, it just goes to show, do you know what I mean? It goes to show how interesting Fox movies are that we're back talking about the MCU. <laughs> yes, no, but I mean, there's, there's a reason, there's a reason, because I was saying it's in phase one. Yeah, 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 and I you know. had Captain America and Chris Evans. So now that we're talking about the, the the Fox Marvel movies, how strange is it to go back and look at Chris Evans as Johnny Storm? I don't know because he's in a different different time in his career, and he's a lot younger looking. I can definitely detach one from the other, like you know. Yeah, but looking back at it now, like when you like in around that time frame, would you ever have thought? 
that you would see him become Captain America. Like the, like the franchise player yeah. basically out next to Robert oh. Downey Jr. It's insane. Like, but yeah, because look, there's I've conf- oh yeah yeah we've and, and we just mentioned it quickly because it's not it's not good enough to waste time on Electra. They got oh. at least they got the costume Fucking right. Right. <laughs> you know, they got the costume right. Poor Jennifer Garner, man. You know, she was actually all right in Daredevil. Then got this, and this film was just this was the this for me was one of those things where it genuinely was no matter how good. Like remember, I said to you the other night when I was watching Dark Phoenix, it was like poor Michael Fassbender acting his ass off in a fucking train wreck. When you look on at a, it on a train, <laughs> yeah, and and as you pointed out to me, Nautilus, he's phoning it in big time, just like the rest of them. He was at least trying to fucking bring something to Magneto while the rest of them were all just baffing around. Jennifer fucking Lawrence is like, yeah, can can you just you know, See, like, can you do this scene so I can fucking go home? You know, like, but like Magnet, Fast Spenders, Magnet, Magneto has had more turns than Big Show, so I, I can't take his character seriously either anymore by the time that came around. That's a referen- wrestling reference, anyone that doesn't know that, and it's fucking, <laughs> it just means flip flopping back and forth from heel to face. But, um, yeah, so like Electra was trash fire, but as I said, the only thing I take away from that is they at least got her costume by the end of that movie on par with the comic. Mm. But it's the Fantastic Four ones. I really want to like ask you because I personally enjoy them. I no 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 no. I, I like. I didn't like them, but there's moments I go back and I go, "Oh, that's cool. Oh, I like that." Like I actually liked Chris Evans as Johnny Storm. I thought he, he was really good. I thought they were all good. Doctor Doom. I mean, I like Doom's costume. You mm. know when he like not when he became all metal, but just when he had the robe and stuff on and everything. I think it looked pretty cool. But the problem was, is they're just, they were just, I think they tried to play. Oh, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, right? Because you Go will ahead. if I am. You'll correct me anyway if I'm wrong. But <laughs> I got, because I, I went back and watched them recently. So I, 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 for me, it seemed like they wanted it to be a serious film, but they wanted to layer it with comedy and jokes. But because of the way they kind of balanced it all out, that none of the jokes really hit. Like I, I felt they, they thought they would. But some was, of the things that was, they say and doing it, I'm kind of going. Hmm. It was starting to be prototype for an MCU movie, wasn't it? That way. Yes. Which is got the balance I've wrong. Had. And then, and then you look at it like with the reboot, it had a stellar fucking cast. Like the cast was really solid in that one. It was a clusterfuck. Like it, it was, was that it was, was really just, really shitty movie. Like that was like. Nothing compared to what it was originally meant to be like, though, because yeah. Josh Trank wanted it to be all like body horror and stuff, but the studio carved that up and re-edited it to bits. And I think, I think by looking before, before what before you go into that one, though, I do want to say about Rise of the Silver Surfer. To this day, what? and and ten MCU years later, when Surfer, when Johnny Storm tries to catch up with the Silver Surfer. And the surfer catches him and just squeezes the fire out of him. It's probably one of my f- most favorite movie comic moments ever. Because, I mean, I, uh, like, what? as a kid, I love the Silver Surfer. I've read all, all the comics, all the, and the first time seeing him in live action, he does that. And I was like, oh, and then they took his board from him. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I give, I give it to the Fantastic Four films in one point though that they did actually. They did actually manage to make the sequel better, which is kind of reversed. A lot of films don't manage to do that. This, the, the Silver Surfer was actually a better film than the original, I found, in, in, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. It's From, like as I said, this is, it all comes down to personal opinion anyway. Like, I mean, there's, there's probably 10 people behind me going like, Tubbs, you're fucking wrong. And I probably am, but I don't fucking care. I love Resident Evil movies. Suck it. But what I'm saying is, is the thing that ruined the sequel for me was the whole Galactus thing. He was like this big it's cloudy cloud <laughs> that like swallowed planets. I was kind of going like, so when I heard that MCU um, now have the Fantastic Four and the X Men, I'm gone, and Daredevil, and fucking Punisher, everything you know? basically, yeah. everything practically now. I'm kind of going like, okay, now we can probably get the stories that, like as you said, you you're probably looking forward now to seeing the Silver Surfer come, and he probably and he de- most definitely will 
when they have Fantastic Four and Doom and Galactus and all that stuff starts coming into play. It'll Give happen. me my Silver Surfer origin movie. That's all I want. <laughs> but that's what I mean, is it? But I mean, look, from the most part, like, I mean, I've, like, I've heard so many people like say that like, like the Fantastic Four movies were like, were like the aids of comic book movies. And I'm going, no, nah, man, have you seen Batman and Robin? You know, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm a DC guy, man. You know what I mean? And I'll happily and I'll openly say it. That was fucking, that was the bottom of the barrel of shit. Fantastic Four wasn't it wasn't as low as that. Now it wasn't much higher, but it never got lower than that. You know, it was very middle of the road, very ghost writer. It was, and I think, and I think what we were saying a while ago is, I think it genuinely did. I think, and and I don't think it's the only one. I think you see it with the majority of the X Men movies. You saw it with like Electra. You saw it with fucking you know, Fantastic Four. You know, fucking. It just it, it seems to be a lot of meddling going on. <clears throat> Disjointed stories, no kind to do with each. You know, and. And thank God the MCU, like Kevin Feige and, 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 and Favreau and all these guys came along and kind of like, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and threw a plan together and said, like, look, if we do it this way, then like we can get all these guys back eventually. That would be way and, down the road. But, you know, but we can do it right. We just got to like have a plan. And it, it's like, as I said, this is why when I said to you before, the MCU are, are on another level. But there mm-hmm. was a time when Marvel, had the same issues as DC. You know, with the up and down swings, the hit and misses and all this kind of stuff. It was weird. Now, it wasn't under the Marvel, you know, Disney Marvel. Yeah, it was under, they were all split in different companies. like so. Exactly. But there was still that, like, time frame of Marvel that was a very kind of, it would jump up. It would, it would get two feet across, fall down, go back up. Do you know what I mean? It was very like, up and down. And DC seems to fall. Like, no, you know what I mean? I, I like a lot, of, lot more of the DC movies than most people do. But mm. that, that comes down to just like being a fan of, of things and liking it for personal reasons and so on and so forth. And a lot of people are probably like probably tell us shut the fuck up and they love all these movies because it's a crazy thing to say. There's a reason all these movies were met. There was an audience mm. for all of these movies, regardless if we liked them or not. You know? And that gets to me to my next point. Out of all 18 movies, Brian, what do you hail as the five worst box Marvel movies? Doesn't have to be in order, just fight. Fan four stick, the last one. Oh, the, the um, remake, yeah. Yeah. Um, Wolverine Origins. Mm. Dark Phoenix. Yeah. How many is that? Three? It's three. Um, the last one. The fucking Dark Phoenix again. <laughs> the last stand, oh, so sorry. The, the last stand, yeah. Both, effort, both efforts at the, the Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Um, number five. Oh, um, let me think now. Apocalypse. Yeah. <clears throat> very much so. Mine, mine is mine is very very similar. Mine is maybe one change out. I have, um, Dark Phoenix, Apocalypse, um. Origins, Electra. Damn, I forgot about Electra. <laughs> and fuck. I will say Electra isn't as good as Apocalypse. So yeah, that's all. What is it? Know. Say, look, I'll go again. At number five, Electra. At number four, Dark Phoenix. No, no, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Dark Phoenix. At number three is Apocalypse. At number four is Last Stand. And number one is Origins. Yeah. Pretty much the same, more or less. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, like, that's that's us kind of naming out our, our like, five worst and so on. So now I got to think, we got to shift gears and we talked about all the bad and the ones we think are the worst. So now we got to shift our gears over and talk about what we feel, like, what Fox did. Not all the way right, but we're we're on the right track with like, what movies. Do you want to do? Do you want to do a top five best ones? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. I mean, look, what we can do here is is, is, is because you know we've ranted about you know all eighteen of them um, in you know, some faction, some small way, shape, or form. So what we'll do is we'll name our five, and then we'll we'll discuss 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 those movies. 
for the last few minutes of this interview or this show. Number one, yeah, Deadpool. Number two, Logan. Number three, X two was was. Number four, first class, and number five, which would be a shocker for you, I think, is New Mutants. Hmm. Um, I I still haven't seen New Mutants. It's not great, but I really enjoyed it. Well, look, come here, look, it was one of those things, you know yourself, man, right? How many times have you heard, this film's terrible, don't go see this, <laughs> this movie flopped, it got zero on Rotten Tomatoes, you watch it and you go, the fuck is wrong with them, this was awesome. Because I you're think it was good because others don't. I think it was good because it's fairly self-contained. There's nothing much to do with the other movies. Yeah, and Anna Taylor Joy was perfect as Magic, which is one another character I really love. Colossus' sister in the comics, yeah, and yeah. she was amazing. And I, I just watched um, the Queen's Gambit as well with her in it. So that kind of on a bit of a kick there, like and the, she was the awesome. girl from New Mutants is in that show. Yeah, I did not know that they were the same person. They look, I, I remember watching, it's like she's very like you want from New Mutants. Didn't realize it was the same actress. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so I suppose I got to get to my five. I'm gonna count them down from five to one, though. Um, yeah, believe it or not, five Daredevil, which is weird. I fucking I really dig that movie, Daredevil. Mm. Then you have Days of Future Past, X2. Deadpool, Logan. There are my five. Solid. Yeah, that's, that's my five movies, man. Daredevil, as I said, Daredevil is that one movie where, like, I know it's not a perfect movie. I don't know what it is. Um, I just, I think it's just, it, I just, it holds a lot of nostalgia for me, like from when I saw it. You know what I mean? Especially for me and you know Phil at chats and on the wrestling show mm. and stuff. We um we kind of watched the shit out of that. Now he, we'd probably look at it now and rip it apart. You know, I have it on director's cut there, but I just. I haven't watched it in a while. I'd probably go back and change that list, you know, because I haven't seen it in a while. But from what I remember, it, it, it holds up there. Um, yeah, so like X2 and Days of, Days of Future Past are my like two, they would be genuinely my two favorite X Men movies, like teen mm. movies, you know. But um, Deadpool then, like it, it was always going to be a show up between Deadpool and Logan for me. But even though I absolutely love Deadpool, there was just something about Logan that I just fucking loved. Because Logan, for me, wasn't just a superhero movie. It falls as just such a good fucking movie in general. I think they missed a massive opportunity in Logan, though. You know when the second Logan comes in? Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers, obviously. The movie's out a couple of years, anyway. All right. But if that had been Sabretooth that kills Professor X and then they fought each other at the end, it would have been... Perfect way to round off. So do you, um, you Jackman? So do you think they should like? I mean, I probably not, but do you think that they should have like brought Liv Schreiber back for that? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's how I would have. The other Logan, the other Weapon X Eleven or whatever the hell he was supposed to be. Just it was Jaren, and I don't know. It didn't make much sense to me at the time. Now I know X twenty three, and they were all cloning him and stuff. Yeah, but I, I felt the perfect ending to that would have been Saber to and Wolverine fighting to the death or whatever. But I mean, and it wasn't even all that kind of stuff for me about Logan, man. I think for me, what it was is it was just, you see, and this is, I mean, it's weird that you got like, you know, Dark Phoenix, because obviously Logan is set, you know, it's so weird because Days of Future Past, like, removes Last Stand, right? Mm-hmm. You're not to get into, you know, timeline continuity or whatever, because there really isn't fucking much. You know, they kind of just throw it in every now and again. But like on the outstretch, that's what it was supposed to have done. It was supposed to have wiped out the last end because at the end they're all kind of back or whatever. And then then um Apocalypse is, is the past, which makes no fucking sense. And the Dark Phoenix makes no sense. Because what you've just started you kick started all this and all these characters are doing this now. So by the time they get to Logan, like how the fuck did they get there? And all this was supposed to have happened, you know? But for me, I don't attach it in my brain. And this is what I mean about movie stuff. And you know what I mean? Like people were, yeah, but you have to understand it's attached. It's not in my brain. Logan is attached to the first two X-Men movies. That's what I attach it to. I'm going to go, all right, that's Logan's group. Last end is gone. So it's one, two, Logan. It's 
years mm-hmm. after they've all, you know, years later they've all gone, and then you just have these two, and it's it, and it becomes this this story about a man just trying to find purpose and 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 acceptance and and family, and I just like the core elements of that fucking movie, man, were just was so good. Like I was going to go, and, you know, I can get past the second Wolverine, I can get past the fact that his powers are fading, you know, things like that. I'm going to go, and, I don't even care. It's just. <clears throat> Jackman's performance, fucking stellar. Stewart's fucking performance as like a broken down, dying um, Professor X. I just thought it was fucking brilliant. Um, mm. And as I said, it isn't like I don't. Think, it's not that it's a better film as Deadpool. I think it just, I just, I, I think I latched onto that more. They're completely different, though, in fairness. Of course, of course. Um, because Deadpool, I think Deadpool is genuinely one of the best. Um, not even just. Fox's movies. I think it's one of the best Marvel movies. The first one is just so fucking, and it's so fucking, it's so on the nose. It's so fucking Fort Wall breaking. But could you imagine any other character playing Deadpool? Any other actor? And like, no, no, I mean, I, I don't like anyone else could play him. But do you think anyone else would hit the landing like Ryan Reynolds did with that character? Yeah, I could imagine. Really? That. I don't think so. I just, I think Reynolds. Has um, see Reynolds has that frat boy thing. Do you know? And you know why I ask you this thing? It's because now, because of the amount of MCU movies that's been there, can could you see anyone else playing Robert Downey Jr.'s role now and stick in that landing the way he did? I think it's like it's like it's like <clears throat> it's like James Bond. When yeah. uh, when an actor leaves the James Bond role, there's always going to be people saying, but he's the best ever, he'll never be replaced 10, 10 years down the line. Someone else is saying it about the new guy. But obviously, yeah, uh, I, I, think, but I, think, I think in a small way, I think the James Bond thing is a little different because it's, it's just James Bond character, it's all about, and obviously mm. because one person plays, they get older, they have to recycle it. I think with the way Marvel have designed this story arc, it's, I mean, if you just started like chopping in different actors here and there, and it's happened because you know, the Hulk. Because Norton's a goal. <laughs> yeah, Norton kind of just you know was being a bit of a dick, and so we're like, well, fuck you, so we're going to go with fucking Mark Ruffalo. That worked because now at the start it was probably a bit jarring because people were, hmm. but the Hulk was so good. He was so good in that role as, as Banner and the Hulk that people were kind of going, oh, this is fucking actually cool. So who cares? Yeah, people will forget if the new guy lends it, like you know. But yeah, I, I, but I, I think I think. Every now and again, and I, this is the reason I mentioned Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and Downey Jr. And it's the same with Chris Evans as well, and like and and, and things like that. I think um, after time, especially because like, like Jackman's put in so much time as Wolverine, and the and Joel, like, RDJ is the same thing. I think I, it, it becomes this thing of like you're 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 in it so long. That's when it becomes a problem. Just mm. like openly, just like, well, like oh, we'll just <clears throat> we replace him because then well, people like, like, ah, it's not the same, you know. And well, like, go on. on the subject of Jackman, like, I have no problem with someone else replacing him. No, because... now, now, because it's a, you, because you know, and I think it's different now, is because I think you know that the MCU X Men, the MCU Wolverine is going to be a completely different thing, but you know, like, but like. I, I think if they had just like pulled Jackman out of the that this X Men franchise just like midway and just went and popped someone else in, people would have been like, "This is fuck." Like if they had, but the they were never going to do that to do because it, the perfect time for them to do it, Brian, was when they went back and made first class. Yeah, but they were like never they going to do that because but, it's like it's like the Gen- it's like the Jennifer Lawrence thing. The actors work more more to them than the character, so yeah. Overplays any storyline, so to me, yeah, I suppose. I mean, look, it's look, it's and look, I mean, we've been saying it all, all through this show. I think, I think it, it, it does come down to, to opinion based fucking things anyway. Because I mean, like, as I said, there could be a hundred people that could be telling me I'm wrong or I'm right, you know. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to like how you view it as, as a fan, you know, as or as an entertainment gore. Um, mm. In general, just to see how that goes, but yeah, I think it's um, I look, I think like we've talked about all the hits and misses before the MCU became a you know, started to grow its 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 feet and and took flight. Um, it makes no sense. Grew its wings and took flight. That's where we go. We go with that one because that <laughs> makes more sense. 
And but, um, yeah. before, you, before you finish, yeah. Kevin Feige worked on all of those movies. He did. And he, he, he was a producer. Movie. Yeah, He was the one learning everything and writing down the mistakes they were making. So, so, see, this is, this is why. So Kevin Feige produ- was a producer on the majority of these movies, if not all. And then goes off and joins, and not joins, but the fathers the MCU with Favreau, mm-hmm. because we have to give Favreau credit for that, because the fucking Jack man is a god. You know? I'm going to say and, Star Wars too. <laughs> yeah, and to think about it this way, Favreau was also in fucking Daredevil. So Favreau was also a part of this Fox fucking uh, Marvel Universe. Just crazy, you know? But yeah, it did, it went off, and it just became its fucking beast. But now with the fact that we all know I'm <clears> back over all this stuff, we now know that all these movies that we were kind of like looking at going hits and misses and what's your fight worse, what's your fight best, you know, did they do it wrong or right? Now, now they're all going to the MCU. So it'd be very, very interesting, Brian, to see where the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and Daredevil, Elektra, Punisher, all these characters, just seeing where they go, where they show up, where they end up, what kind of what kind of impact they're going to have on phases four, five, and forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm here, I, I, I'm here for the, as a fan, I'm very interested to see this, this, because as I said, we grew up on those Marvel movies and now we're older, you know, supposed to be wiser, older people enjoying these new, these new things, these new toys. You know, where does he get those? That, I tell you, he gets them in fucking Toys R Us because he's got a coupon disc, right? And he fills out and goes, yeah, man, give me my free shit. Fuck am I talking about? Right, I on that note, because I'm starting to ramble off my brains here, right? Brian knows when that happens, it's time to fucking check out. So, on that note, Brian, I've enjoyed this chat. I think we should do more of these. Um, different topics, different movies, different whatevers. We've got a few more coming. So, uh, yes, as always, I am Stephen Tuberty, a.k.a. Twisted Tubs. He is Brian O'Regan, a.k.a. Brian's Action Figure Reviews. This is the Twisted Tubs podcast. You've just watched the Marvel Fox Universe episode. We will be back shortly with more content, more stuff for your eyes. Thank you for watching and have a good night.